It's what makes us unique. It's what separates us from every living thing on this planet. It separates you from me, from your brothers, your sisters, your parents. But also, it's what makes us all the same. You are about to learn how your DNA makes you who you are. This is how it happens. Now, this all begins in one place, inside your cells in the nucleus. Now, in the nucleus, there's nucleoli and, more importantly, DNA. Now, this DNA in your nucleus is what stores your genetic information. The nucleus is what contains your genetic information. And it's this that determines who you will be. Now in order to get a real grasp of what this is, this genetic information stored in your nucleus, in the DNA, we have to go inside the nucleus and look at the DNA for ourselves. And here is our DNA. Notice how it looks like a ladder. It's these two sugar phosphate backbones, these strands of DNA, which are composed of many, many nucleotides. A nucleotide is a group of three different elements. That is the sugar, the phosphate, and the base pair. Now, these strands are connected with base pairs, linked together by a weak hydrogen bond. Now, in DNA, DNA alone, and DNA replication, base pairs match up with other base pairs. The general rule is A goes with T, adenine with thymine, and C goes with G, cytonine and guanine. Now these nucleotides formed by the sugars, the phosphates, and the base pairs are arranged in a specific order in your DNA. It's this specific order that dictates what you will look like, your uniqueness and your individuality. Just like in DNA, mRNA is formed using base pairs. These new mRNA base pairs come in and match up with the current DNA ones. Now, in matching mRNA with DNA, A goes with U, and C still remains with G. Now this mRNA strand, newly formed by matching the base pairs with the DNA strand, as you can see here, is what is going to be used as the code during the next step, translation. The next step in the process will be the movement of the mRNA out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm to meet with the ribosomes where translation will occur. Now let it be noted that as we move out into the cytoplasm, these new mRNA strands formed from DNA strands are mere images, copies of the original DNA strand. They'll serve as the messenger as they go out into the ribosomes. Now here we are inside the ribosome. We've exited the nucleus and now we have gone through the cytoplasm and into this organelle. Now in this organelle, the ribosome, is where translation will occur. Now translation is the process of when this mRNA is translated into something different, tRNA. And that tRNA is what will help us form amino acids and proteins that help code and bring about your physical features, coded for by your DNA. Now to begin this translation process, we need to start with a start codon. Now a codon is a set of three base pairs that will link up with this mRNA strand and its base pairs. Now the start codon is what begins this process. And as the start codon settles here, more codons come in and they have to match up with these on the mRNA. Now each codon that links up with this mRNA is carrying an amino acid. Now these specific amino acids create a specific chain by linking together with the coding here presented by the mRNA. These chains link together by removing a water molecule and forming a peptide bond between the amino acids. Eventually, Eventually this amino, amino acid chain, chain can get very, very large. large. And this is what's been created. It's gone from DNA to amino acid. DNA unzipping and being approached by the mRNA. This mRNA molecule, now newly formed as a mirror image, a copy of that DNA goes out into the cytoplasm and towards the ribosome. 
Now once in the ribosome, these, these codons, they come in and they attach to this mRNA strand, carrying it with them an amino acid. Now these amino acids are linked together as more codons come in. Now this amino acid chain can be formed very long, and once it's long enough, a stop codon, not carrying an amino acid, comes in and stops this process, creating what I have behind me, a protein. Now it's this protein that's been formed, coded for by your DNA, and through multiple processes has been created. It will go on to code for you, your eye color, your hair color, whether you're tall, you're short, you have a big nose like me, or many other things. It's all part of the process. You have just learned how what your traits are, how they were created, how from inside the nucleus of your tiniest cells, that DNA unzipped, and this all began.